Hello, I am Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a consultant histopathologist. I'll be talking about epithelial neoplasms of the ovary, prena tumors. Classification of prena tumors modified from WHO. Benign prena tumor, prena adenofibroma 99%, borderline prena tumor less than 1%, malignant prena tumor less than 1%. General background. They are ovarian epithelial neoplasms composed of urethelial type epithelial cell. Cell of origin of prena tumors is uncertain. Prena tumors account for 1% to 2% of all ovarian epithelial neoplasms. Most of them are incidental findings at operation or on pathologic examination. The average age at presentation is approximately 50 years. About 70% of the patients being over 40 years of age. Some cases are accompanied by signs of hyperesterinism such as uterine bleeding from endometrial hyperplasia in a postmenopausal woman. They are usually unilateral ovarian neoplasms. Rare extra ovarian prena tumors are reported. The rate of growth is slow and ascites is rare. Benign prena tumor, prena adenofibroma. It is a tumor composed of bland transitional urothelial like epithelium, typically embedded in fibromatous stroma. It is the most common subtype of ovarian urothelial type tumor, 90% to 95%. It accounts for 5% of benign ovarian epithelial tumors in clinical studies. It is usually unilateral. These tumors are benign with no risk of recurrence or progression. Gross appearance. Benign prena tumor, adenofibroma. The size is small, less than 2 cm. All rare examples are more than 10 cm in dimension. The tumor has a solid, well circumscribed, firm, lobulated yellow and white cut surface. This photo shows a large prena tumor involving the right ovary. The gross appearance of this neoplasm is very similar to that of fibroma or thecoma. Microscopic features of benign prena tumor, adenofibroma. They consist of a smooth, contoured, sharply defined solid and cystic nests of bland transitional epithelium, urothelial epithelium, embedded within abundant fibrous tissue. These are essential and desirable diagnostic criteria. The epithelial nests of prena tumor are composed of cells with oval nuclei, fine chromatin, many of which exhibit longitudinal grooves similar to those seen in granulosa cell tumors. Those lining the cyst may be flattened, cuboidal, or columnar. These two photos show solid epithelial nests which are dispersed throughout fibromatous stroma 
that is adenofibromatous architecture associated with calcifications. The nests are composed of stratified uniform cells with blend of grooved nuclei and may have central lumina microcyst containing xenophilic material. This photo shows cells with ovoid nuclei and longitudinal coffee bean-like grooves, creating a resemblance to urothelial tumors. Metablastic mucinous epithelium is present within a nest. The tall columnar mucus secreting cells beneath which are stratified transitional type cells in higher magnification. Differential diagnosis of benign prena tumor, adenofibroma. Endometrioid adenofibromas. They may be difficult to differentiate from prena adenofibromas. Prena tumor is distinguished from endometrioid adenofibroma by the presence of stratified epithelium, prominent nuclear grooves, frequent association with a mucinous component. Such a distinction is not clinically important. Borderline prena tumor. It is a tumor of transitional urothelial epithelium displaying papillary architecture and lacking stromal invasion. It is a very uncommon tumor. They are unilateral and confined to the ovary. Patients are usually more than 50 years. The behavior is benign and local recurrence is rare. Gross appearance of borderline prena tumor. Unlike benign prena tumor, the tumors are typically large median size 12 cm. These two photos show unilocular cysts containing large polypoid masses of white tumor tissue arising from their lining. They have a more fleshy appearance on sectioning compared with benign prena tumors. Rarely the tumor is completely solid. Microscopic features of borderline Brenna tumor. This photo shows nests and papillae which are lined by stratified transitional type epithelia with mild to moderate cytologic atibia. The degree of atibia is similar to that seen in low-grade papillary urothelial carcinoma. The cells are usually uniform and show elongated nuclei with fine chromatin and visible nucleoli. A moderate to severe degree of cytologic atibia is present. Negative for invasive carcinoma, areas of benign prena tumor are nearly always present. This photo shows a prominent papillary architecture resembling a low-grade papillary urothelial neoplasm. It is important to note that papillary growth resembling low-grade papillary urothelial neoplasm of urothelial tract or rarely crowded nests of transitional urothelial epithelium without stromal invasion are essential and desirable diagnostic criteria. Appearance of prena tumor with typical solid appearance 
coexisting with mucinous cyst adenoma. Prenatal tumors show a strong association with mucinous tumors in one quarter of the cases and are sometimes seen together with stroma ovarii. The mucinous component is usually mucinous cyst adenoma. Microscopic features of borderline prenatuma with the coexistent borderline mucinous tumor. The prenatuma component consists of sharply defined transitional epithelial nest in a fibromatous stroma. The mucinous borderline tumor shows cystic spaces with glandular and papillary structures lined by intestinal type epithelium. Malignant prenatal tumors. Malignant prenatal tumors are rare and by definition have a frankly malignant component reminiscent of high-grade papillary urothelial carcinoma, stromal invasion, benign or borderline areas, some of these have been bilateral. Microscopic features of malignant prenatal tumors. They show cytologically malignant areas, usually resembling high-grade urothelial carcinomas of the urinary tract with stromal invasion. The tumor cells are arranged in solid sheets irregularly shaped nests or branching trabeculae. A benign prenatal tumor is seen on the left in these photos. The tumor cells have high-grade features including pileomorphic hyperchromatic nuclei, brisk mitotic activity, desmoblastic stroma response, areas of comedonecrosis in a malignant prenatal tumor are seen, mucinous squamous or spindle cell differentiation may occur. These two photos show invasion of stroma by clusters and nests of cells with irregular margins and single cells. The tumor cells show more prominent nuclear tibia than is typically seen in borderline prenatal tumor. This photo shows a cyst lined by solid and cribriform growth infiltrating stroma. This photo shows papillae with thick stalks projecting into cystic spaces with cells having marked nuclear tibia and mitotic figures similar to high-grade papillary urothelial carcinoma of the urinary bladder with or without stromal invasion. Immunohistochemistry of prenatal tumors Prenatal tumors are positive for cytokeratin-7 cytoplasmic, PAX-8 nuclear, P63 nuclear, GATA-3 nuclear. It is negative for cytokeratin-20. Differential diagnosis of malignant prenatal tumors. High-grade serous carcinoma with a transitional pattern can resemble a malignant prenatal tumor. Unlike the latter, high-grade serous carcinoma displays more prominent papillae, more nuclear polymorphism and nucleoli, lack of areas of benign or borderline prenatal tumor morphology, a strong and diffuse nuclear staining for P53, 
a strong and diffused nuclear and cytoplasmic positivity for P16. Metastatic urethelial carcinoma. It is recognized on the basis of the clinical history of a prior or concurrent primary urethelial carcinoma, absence of benign and borderline brain tumors, absence of glands lined by mucinous epithelium, positivity for cytokeratin 20, negativity for PAX8. Prognosis and therapy of prenatal tumors. Benign prenatal tumors and virtually all borderline prenatal tumors have a benign clinical course. Complete excision, unilateral oophorectomy or total hysterectomy and bilateral oophorectomy is curative for benign and borderline prenatal tumors. No adjuvant treatment for benign or borderline prenatal tumors is needed. Approximately 80% of malignant prenatal tumors are stage 1 and have an excellent prognosis after surgery. The 5-year survival rate is around 90%. Around 20% of malignant prenatal tumors present with extra ovarian disease and are usually treated with adjuvant chemotherapy. They behave like other advanced stage ovarian carcinomas. These are the references. Thank you.